Do you sometimes feel like you are your own greatest enemy in getting in your own way and receiving what you truly want out of life? Continue watching this video to learn what self-sabotage is and why we do it to ourselves. I'll also share strategies to help you stop sabotaging yourself in order to live a more joyful and fulfilling life. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Mike and I'm a Kung Fu and Tai Chi teacher based out of Boulder, Colorado. On this channel, I share inspiration and strategies each week around topics such as personal growth, self-care, and mindfulness to help you live a more masterful life that is both intentional and fulfilling. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Today's video is about self-sabotage. What is it? Why do we do it? And how can we overcome it? Self-sabotage is when we hold ourselves back from reaching our highest potential or reaching that next level of success or happiness that we know we really want. We often do this without even realizing it, but sometimes we can even be aware that we're doing it but just can't stop. It can show up in many different forms and many different facets of our lives, from our relationships to procrastination to how we approach change. For example, in relationships, you may complain about your partner's behavior when you actually need to make the same change yourself, or or you may see your capacity for change as being dependent on other people's behavior. For example, you may say you'd exercise more or you'd start eating healthier if the rest of your family were supportive and on board. Why do we do this? Why do we sometimes seem to hurt ourselves or even seem to enjoy staying stuck and being less than the best version of ourselves? At the core of it, it's because it's comfortable. We're used to it. We love to stay in what we know with the predictable because we know what it means, what it looks like. We know how we're going to feel when we're doing it. We don't like anything that's too risky or uncertain that will put us outside our comfort zone. Whenever we bump up against the edge of our comfort zone and try to grow or change our behaviors and do things in a different way, it can be kind of scary. We don't really know what to expect and sometimes our subconscious tells us, hold on there, maybe we should slow down. Let's stay back here where it's safe. We don't allow ourselves to fully enjoy ourselves and be happy and appreciate our accomplishments because it feels so new and different. A part of us can feel afraid of our successes because we don't know how things might change or if the rug will suddenly be pulled out from under us. It's this fear of the unknown that sometimes makes us play it small because we don't want to get our hopes up. We stay in our comfort zones. And this is also tied into self-confidence and self-worth because we might not feel like we deserve better or to feel truly happy. And it can carry over to our goals too. We might often think we have a desire to reach certain goals or a certain level of success, but subconsciously in the back of our minds, we don't feel like we're actually worthy of that goal or deserve to achieve it. So we might self-sabotage ourselves through procrastination or making excuses or wanting to give up, maybe even not fully committing in the first place. If we don't believe we are deserving or worthy of a goal, it doesn't matter how hard we work towards it, we'll always find a way to block ourselves from reaching it. A popular pattern I've run myself and also hear a lot from others is that I'll work really hard and achieve a bit of success, but then tell myself, great job, you've made some progress, now you can rest. But during that time that I'm resting, I'm no longer moving forward and growing. And in fact, when we're not growing, we're actually moving backwards because things never actually stay the same. So in this way, I self-sabotage myself because it's scary to grow too fast or reach a level of success that's new and uncomfortable. Therefore, it's very common to find us reverting back to comfortable and familiar patterns and behaviors and not give our best. But don't beat yourself up over this or start spiraling into negative self-talk like, why am I doing this to myself? Or why do I always do this to myself? Instead, just try to notice whenever you find yourself self-sabotaging and running a pattern that doesn't serve you. Just be curious and see, does it happen when I start feeling better about myself? Is there something that triggers it? How does it look and feel? Does it show up in my work or relationships or with specific people or types of experiences in my life? Start paying attention. Don't necessarily feel you need to change or fix anything at this point. Just notice whenever it's happening because awareness is the first step. Try to become aware of whenever you're feeling that resistance and pushing up against the edges of your comfort zone. I found that it's like working a muscle. The more I practice, the better and stronger I get. The next step is to set some goals. Identify what are some things that you would like to achieve. What is it that you would like to move your life towards? Because self-sabotage implies that we're holding ourselves back and manifesting what we want 
want. So it's helpful to identify some long and short term goals so that you can have more clarity in how self-sabotage might be showing up in your life. If you need some help setting goals, check out my previous video here, which helps you create a 90 day action plan for yourself. It's only by setting goals can we practice becoming aware of and overcoming our self-sabotage. This forces us to learn to manage our fears, to feel the fear, but do it anyways. Procrastination is often just a form of self-sabotage. We care about something so much that we're afraid of taking action and then failing. When we procrastinate, we're letting fear control us, our decisions and our actions. The greater the distance between knowing what we want and doing something about it, the greater the stress and anxiety we will experience. So big picture wise, when we are not steadily moving in the direction we know we want, we can be certain that we're sabotaging ourselves somewhere. As we begin to become aware of and understand the patterns and behaviors that enable this, we begin to free ourselves and allow us to live a more joyful and fulfilling life. The process of facing our fears, stretching our comfort zones, and developing our self-confidence and self-worth allows us to step fully into the greatest expression of our being. The only person holding us back is ourselves. We are worthy of everything we desire. Everything is possible. We sometimes just need to get out of our own way and not block ourselves from receiving all that we want. Hey, thanks for watching this video, question of the day. In what ways have you noticed self-sabotage on your own journey? Let me know in the comments below. And please like and share this video if you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn notifications on if you like to receive inspiration and strategies each week just like this. Have a wonderful day and see you in the next video.